welcome to Christian Fitness. Today's program is gonna be a lower body program. So we're gonna exercise our legs. You don't need any dumbbells, don't need any, anything else to exercise today, just your own body weight. And today we're gonna to find out, what is a chirk apple? Well, we'll find out that's pretty soon, but we're also gonna to talk to Guy Evans about insomnia, and we're gonna study 1 Timothy. Yeah, so grab your Bible, grab your cell phone, whatever you wanna study in the Word with us, but we're gonna be in 1 Timothy, so you can go ahead and flip forward to that right now. But the chirk apple, that's gonna that's be a fun surprise in just a minute, but let me I'll give you a preview, it's delicious. Trust me, it is really, really good, so stay tuned for the chirk apple. All right, we said we're gonna work our lower body today, so round number one, we just wanna stretch. Make sure you're loose and everything's heated up. Let's start with our ankles. We're just gonna do little ankle turns, so you can just point your right toe down at the ground and roll your ankle. We like to go clockwise, and then after a few seconds or so, you can go counterclockwise. Just make sure it's nice and limber and loosened up. Ready for our lower body exercises today. Good, let's do the other one. Yeah, and Lori mentioned we're gonna to talk to Guy Evans from Bioactive Nutrients about, he's gonna talk about getting better sleep. A lot of people, especially as we start to age, sleep becomes a little bit more difficult, so it's really important to get a good night's sleep. Good, let's stretch our quads. So you see, we have the handy little stool here to help us balance. <laughs> you don't have to, you can try to balance on your own or use your partner or use your child or use furniture, but you just want to stretch this front quadricep because we're going to be working legs today. Um, so you definitely want to get everything loosened up. Good, let's switch to the other side. Well, and it also helps that once you start warming your muscles up, the blood starts flowing through right. the body better and you feel a lot less tight. Yeah, and the reason we're working lower body today is for balance. We want to build some strength and balance, but Lori's got some neat little facts. Um, while she covers these facts, Let's stretch our hamstrings. So just put your left heel down and lean into it. But we want to we want to improve your balance and improve your strength. And Lori's got some neat little statistics on that. And one of the things we talked we found out was that falls in emergencies accounted for six to ten percent um, of in, all emergency in, room visits. Room, right. Yeah. And so out of all the emergency room visits, six to ten percent are from people falling. And people who normally fall from you know, vertigo or they have the weak legs, they don't have the strength or they don't have balance. So today we're working on strength and balance for your lower body so you won't be one of those emergency room visits. So that's what we're doing today, just strengthening the lower body which will help improve your balance and it'll help you avoid the emergency room. Join us in the kitchen for this healthy life tip. Live a healthy life presented by Christian Fitness. This healthy life tip is a creative way to make a healthier snack or sandwich. We call it the chur... What? It's, a, it's a chirk apple sandwich. <laughs> there are only three simple ingredients. Cheese, turkey, and apples. A chirk apple sandwich. It's hard to say, but so easy to make. Take an apple, cut it into slices, then use two slices instead of your bread. You just place your turkey and your cheese in between the apple slices, and there you have it, a chirk apple sandwich. A great quick snack or a delicious way to cut down your carbs. So ditch the dough and use apple slices as your sandwich bread. Give it a try and let us know what you think. The Chirk Apple Sandwich, you just might love it. This Healthy Life Tip was brought to you by the Christian Television Network. The Chirk Apple, oh my gosh. So it, that really, it's not even such a thing. So it's something that Robert Wood. Well, it is a thing. It, I mean, it is, we, but. <laughs> we made it, we made up the name, but now it's yeah. a thing. It didn't used it to be a thing. It is now a thing. thing. So now everybody can talk. What is a chirk apple? A chirk apple is a sandwich with apple and cheese and delicious, turkey. Delicious. It is awesome. All right, well, let's strengthen our legs some more. Now we had some fun with that. We just want to do a knee raise. And if you want to get a little extra cardio out of this, you can actually do a march. But you want to bring your knee up at least the height of your waist. If you want to get cardio, just march for the next minute and a half or two minutes. If you want to just build strength, just lift it and hold it there for as long as you can, maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then you want to switch legs. But remember, we're building strength for the lower body so that we can improve your balance. Because Lori brought up that stat about the emergency rooms. They actually did a study in a nursing home in Florida with some senior citizens, and they did a 14-week exercise program with just six- Twice a week. Right, two yeah. only two times a week, yep. six really simple exercises. And after 14 weeks, the incidences of falls had decreased by 36%. Well, not only that, the increase of lower body strength was 81%. Right. And there was a 39 in 
percent increase in upper body. So that's a huge increase. So you think about just twice a week for 14 weeks, 14 weeks. twice a week, right. just six, six simple days. exercises yeah. for the main muscle groups, which we're working right now, which are your thighs. Your thigh is one of the main muscle groups. So just build that lower body strength, which will help your balance. Um, you know, so many people have issues with tripping and falling, especially as you get older. A lot of people will trip and fall, and, and that hip fracture or what might happen during that fall is really detrimental. So build up some strength. Do this exercise with us. Get off your couch if you're still sitting there. And, and, do and some participate. Of these That's right. That's right. Doesn't do you any good just to sit there. Just like we're going to get into the scripture in a minute, it doesn't do you any good if you don't actually study the word. you got to get into it, and you got to exercise as well. Yeah, start, you can feel it, it will cramp after a little while. If you're not used to this, you or start holding that up heat. for a while. Yeah, you feel it heat up and start to cramp. So go grab your Bible. We're going to go study our scripture now, which is going to be in 1 Timothy. And we're actually going to run over to the couch, sit down and do our little Bible study. So 1 Timothy, we're going to be in 4, 8. And I'm going to read the NASB. For bodily discipline is only of a little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The NIV says, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has a value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. And the ERV is a version we really like reading because it's just, it's a little bit simple. more current. Yeah, simple. Training your body helps you in some ways, but devotion to God helps you in every way. It brings you blessings in this life and in the future life too. I love that because it's talking about your salvation, your life eternally with Christ. Yeah. Well, let's keep exercising and we'll continue to talk about that scripture. But that is our scripture for today. And we're really going to break it down and go into all of 1 Timothy and explain that a little bit more. This round, we want to do front leg raises. So we did knees. Now we're going to just do a front leg raise. So just raise your leg up. And again, if you want cardio, you could pump this you know, as fast as you want, as many times as you want. For strength, we just alternate and just lift and hold it. And you will feel, after a little while, you'll start feeling some burning in that right. muscle. And that's good. That means that the muscle's heating up, blood is flowing to that area. And if you've got family around or your spouse or whatever, you guys might make a competition out of it and see how high you can hold it. The higher you hold it, <laughs> you're really going to start to feel it if you get it up higher. So hold it as high as you can. Challenge your children or grandchildren to see how long they can hold it and how high they can hold it for how many seconds. That's why you have the great little Christian fitness clock there so you can gauge yourself. So 1 Timothy 4, 8. Love that scripture, which is funny because as an exercise show, a lot of people you know, would say, oh, well, why do you exercise? It only profits the body a little. Well, it does profit a little. It doesn't profit yeah. nothing. It does profit a little. That's what we're doing. It profits with balance, helps your balance. It decreases falls, which we just studied a second ago. But what's more important than that is getting into the Word, and that's what that scripture Very is telling us. So, yeah. But it's, it's important to keep, to keep your body strong and keep it healthy. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so you should take care of it. Um, but it is important as you age, and we're all aging, so as you age, then continue to take care of the temple. I mean, we get up every morning and do what? We brush our teeth, why? Stretch. To take care of your teeth. You yeah. brush your hair, why? To take care of your hair. We, so we do all those things, just throw exercise in there as one of the things that you need to do. I almost forgot, I'm sitting here listening to you and... <laughs> Well, it is hard. Just, you're trying, we're trying to exercise and then we're studying scripture and we're talking about church apples. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> just having fun. We just want to have fun. Just have fun with us. And we're going to listen to Guy Evans with Bioactive Nutrients and see what he says about sleep. Insomnia. The inability to fall asleep, stay asleep, or get the amount of sleep you need to wake up feeling rested. Are you having trouble sleeping? Did you know it could be your diet, or stress, or lifestyle? My point is that lack of sleep affects millions of Americans, and it can really do a number on your health, both physical and mental. When you don't get enough rest, your immune system is compromised, and your body just can't rebuild from the daily assault. There can be memory loss, increased accidents, your organs won't work as efficiently, and that can lead to weight gain, diabetes, heart problems, digestive issues, even a reduction in libido. Let's not forget anxiety and depression, the silent killers. There are so many suggestions on getting more and better sleep, and some might work. 
but I'm a big fan of nutrients like B vitamins and L-theanine and herbs like valerian root, ashwagandha, lemon balm, and chamomile. I know they work. Need more information on falling asleep and staying asleep? Just call my office or visit bioactivenutrients.com. What a great fact about the lack of sleep or what some people would say insomnia, but that's really important to understand what that is so that your body functions better on sleep. He didn't mention one thing though that's, that's really true. good for sleep yeah. and that's exercise. Exercise really helps you sleep better, so get a lot of exercise and you'll sleep better as well as or, all the or things go that for guy a walk. about. Yeah, after dinner. After dinner, go digest. for a walk. Your body will, you know, relax, you'll digest mm -hmm. your food, and then you'll sleep well at night. Oh, let's start our next exercise. We did a knee lift, a front leg lift. Now we're gonna do a side leg lift. This one's a little bit harder, but you just wanna raise your leg up out to the side. And again, if you want cardio, you know, you pump it as many times as you can and then switch legs. If you just wanna build some more strength, you just hold it up. And again, as we talked about earlier, if you wanna challenge family members, kids, things like that, see how high you can hold it, which is really interesting on this one, because you'll feel it all the way through your back pocket right into your lower back. I mean, yeah, the higher you hold this, this can be, yeah. uh, quite the stretch and strength building. Yeah, you may feel that in your hip or in just the upper thigh, but I gotta find a bright place for my yeah, We've got a stool here, in the way, we're in the yeah. way of each other, so yeah. <laughs> but you will feel that. And this is one of my favorites as we're doing lower body strengthening, which earlier we were talking about balance and how important the balance is. This is a really good one because it's not something you normally do. So you're gonna work some muscles that you aren't used to working, but it's gonna really improve your balance. Are we talking about balance and we're holding on to a stool? Yeah, so should I let oh. go? Okay, there, no more stool. Okay. <laughs> do away with How the stool. How long can you, yeah. And if you do, if you don't have a stool, it does help to hold the arms out. Or you think of a tightrope walker, they use the giant pole to help balance them. Yeah. So if you, yeah, displace the weight on the opposite side that your leg is going. This thing is in my way. <laughs> Here, I'll hold your hand. <laughs> okay, there. There. Help See, now that helps. If you're, if you're working out with somebody else, don't hold on to them, but you can literally use that as like a point of reference and helps keep your balance. So get your Bible or your phone because we're going to get into the scripture next, which is 1 Timothy 4, 8, which I love that scripture. Exercise profits the body a little, which it does. It profits it a little, but exercising your spirit man and the word of God profits for eternity. So let's go back into 1 Timothy. And we're actually just gonna talk about the history of that scripture. When we study scripture, we love to really dig into it and not just take the one scripture and pull it out, but discover who wrote it, who they were writing to, what was going on at that time, um, how it correlates to the rest of that scripture. So, so Paul is talking to Timothy and he's training him up because he's very young. And he grew up with a Jewish mother and a Greek father. And he has a long lineage of his, you know, both areas, of, but his family, his mother, he really followed his mother and people knew who he was and they respected him. And Paul really wanted him to be an example of this church that he was gonna be left to run. Yeah, yeah, Paul leaves Timothy in Ephesus to run the church there and organize the church. So he sends in this letter to talk to him about how to be, and actually it's really, they call it the pastoral letter. It was a letter to Timothy as a pastor of the church, and it's a great letter for us today. We always try to think, how do I apply that scripture to today? How do I apply it to my life? Well, this is the perfect one as a pastor, as a church member, just as a believer. It's a great letter on who we are supposed to be in Christ. So, and here Paul is leaving Timothy there, and this is actually where Paul was stoned. Timothy so, is from the yes, village where from, Paul was stoned, right, you, from yes. Lystra, right. Yeah. He's from the same town that Paul was stoned and left for dead. So maybe Timothy saw him, Who right? Knows. We don't know. But it anyway, wasn't, it's not it in the words, the so we don't town. know. We're right. supposing. All right, this round we're going to do squats. We probably could have stayed at the couch, but we decided oh, to come over here. You want to stay on the couch? couch. Right. Yeah. So do squats That's at home. You can do them this. on your couch. You can do them wherever. Uh, but basically, everyone knows what a squat is. You just stand up. You could just call it a stand-up exercise. So you're just going to stand up and sit down. For cardio, do as many of these as you can, as fast as you can. If you want to build some extra strength, I like to do them in slow motion. So you go down as slow as you can, <laughs> and then just barely touch and come up as slowly as you can. Okay, now that looks really strange because I'm going quite... Well, you could go fast. you faster you, than Yeah, you're here. working the cardio. I'm just trying to build some more strength. <laughs> trying to improve my balance here as I get older, starting to age. But. So anyway, so this letter, 1 Timothy, written from Paul to Timothy, 
And Lori brought up a great point about Timothy's mother was Jewish and his father was Greek. So if you think of the Greek, the Greeks of that time, they were, there were a lot of mythology. Okay, you had, you know, they, they worshiped the gods, Apollo and all these different gods. They actually thought that those gods would come and indwell people. So they had all these false doctrines that Timothy had to deal with. And that's why it talks about the exercise. You think about the Olympic Games started in Greece way back then. So they were into, and not any different than today, hobbies or athletics or whatever it might be. Exercising for those does profit the body a little, but it's more important for your spiritual growth than it is your physical growth. So he's writing Timothy this letter of his conduct and how, he, how people should see him and, and how he should act in his character. Which we're going to get into that in just a second. We've got some great scripture for that. Like I said, we're not just pulling out this one verse. We're going to look at some verses around that. I'm starting to feel this. I'm definitely <laughs> feeling it. So we're profiting the body a little while we're doing this, but we're also talking about the Word. So we're actually combining this whole scripture verse into one thing. Actually, that's what Christian fitness is all about. It's about getting your body into oh. a little bit of shape, profit a little, but then get into the Word of God. So let's go back into 1 Timothy. And we want to go to verse, it's going to be 4.12. So 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. I love that verse. That's probably my favorite verse of the whole thing. We should have made that the key verse for the day. <laughs> I love that verse. But Lori mentioned it earlier. Timothy is younger. And so it says here, let no one despise your youth. In other words, it doesn't matter what your age is, how old you are, if you have these characters, these attributes that Paul is telling Timothy to have, which he evidently did, but it says, be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. That covers it all. I mean, basically, those are the fruits of the Spirit. We talk about the fruit the, of the Spirit. Yeah, fruit of the Holy Spirit, right. yeah. Who He is, He's love. But what He does in us, we should see by the Spirit in, in faith and in purity. We should see someone that is pure towards the Lord, has um, great character in the Lord, has, is walking in the wisdom of the Lord. So everything that the Holy Spirit is should dwell in us. And He's telling him, what we see in you, make sure that others see that. Be that example for others. Yeah, so don't let your youth stand in the way. Be an example, a spiritual example, regardless of your age. So great lesson for us today. All right, now let's work our calves. We've done our thighs. You actually can stay on your couch if you like to, and you just want to raise up on your toes. And I like to actually lean forward with my elbows and put a little weight down just to add some extra weight. Or if you want, you can stand up. So if you want to stand up and really work your calves, you just do a calf raise up on your toes. And, and then you can stay there. You can hold it, right, you can hold it, doing a kind of an isometric. You can point your toes in, <laughs> work it a little bit differently. You can point your toes out, all kinds of variations for this exercise. And you can do all of that from sitting down too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just maybe lean on your... Or you could do one foot at a time. So you can maybe just balance on the other toe, and do one leg at a time. This, this is probably, I don't know, I said the, earlier that, that side leg raise was my favorite. I think this is my favorite. I changed my mind. Am I allowed to do that? Change my mind. Yeah, I actually like this one as far as balance goes, only because you think about if you, 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 know, you trip over something, you trip over a tree stump or part of the sidewalk, wherever it might be, and you try to catch your balance, you're going to catch it on the balls of your feet, you know, on the ball of your foot. So what we're doing right now with this exercise is going to really improve your balance. So if I trip, you know, I'm going to be able to catch myself and have that strength and that balance not to fall. Well, there's another benefit besides just the balance. If you think about what we're doing right now, we're raising up on our, on the balls of our feet. So we're actually exercising our feet. And mm -hmm. believe it or not, your feet can feel stiff. Let's say you're wearing a shoe all day long or you're wearing the same shoes for 10, 12 hours. Mm -hmm. Your feet can get stiff, and it's important that your feet are strong and that you're able to move. So this helps that too. You're getting a great benefit that way as well. Mm -hmm. It's like rolling a tennis ball, taking a tennis ball on the floor and rolling your foot on it. That's another good one. So 1 Timothy 4, I love those attributes that we talked about. But actually, we're going to get back into that now and go a little bit further into the scripture, a little bit past, um, a little bit, I'm sorry, we're gonna go Forward, back a little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to 1 Timothy 4, 6. And Paul is saying, saying to Timothy, tell this to the brothers and sisters there. This will show that you are a good servant of Christ Jesus 
You will show that you are made strong by the words of faith and good teaching you followed. People tell silly stories that don't agree with God's truth. Don't follow what these stories teach, but teach yourself to be devoted to God. I want to read the NLT really quick too. If you explain these things to the brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be worthy a worthy servant of Christ Jesus, one who is nourished by the message of faith and the good teaching you have followed. Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas or old wives' tales. Instead, train yourselves to be godly. Wow, so there's <laughs> so much in there. So many, I like to call them nuggets, but little nuggets you can pull out of that. I love that he says, be nourished by the word. We always talk about, you know, our church apple can nourish you because it's nutritious, but nourishment of the word is so much more important. So he's talking about being nourished by the word, and he's talking about the silly wives' tales. Don't. Well, yeah, a lot of people will say different things, and it's not scripture at all, so it's important to know what the word says, so that you know, is that a wives' tale or is that the word of God? because only the Word of God produces life. Right, well, let's go exercise. I wanna talk about that some more, but keep in mind, Timothy's father was Greek. So you talk about, you know, the, the mythology and those things, that's what he's saying. Don't even debate with those guys. All right, heel to toe is this next exercise. We're gonna step, just put your heel to your toe and take a few steps forward. Just heel to toe, heel to toe. And remember, today is a balance program. <laughs> so we, here we are, strengthening and working on your balance. Oh, we're going one more. Yeah, we don't have much room with the carpet, but if you're at home, you can walk all the way around your living room, you can go around your kitchen, you can go as far as you want, but just heel to toe. You know, it doesn't look like much, but if you really do this, I mean, I'm every once in a while I'll wave my arms out. <laughs> yeah, hold your arms because out. it does. I mean, you are really working on balance, especially if you're not looking down at your feet. You're just walking, so you do have to really check your agility there. Another challenge is to close your eyes. Oh, no, that I'm makes it even that. more difficult. So if you're at home and you really want to challenge yourself, make sure you're you know, clear of any objects to fall not against. Not doing that. <laughs> but if you close your eyes, it makes it much more difficult. It's like walking a tightrope. Yeah. You know, or like a balance beam, like a gymnast would do. Mm -hmm. Talk about balance and agility. So isn't that great? This whole letter from Paul to Timothy instructed him how to form the church and then how for him to act personally so that people see Christ through him. They see, you know, that he walks Christ-like, that he has the fruit of the Spirit, with all those things that we mentioned earlier. I love that. Don't despise your youth. Don't let them despise your youth. In other words, so Timothy would get up in the synagogue to preach, and as the pastor or the teacher and preacher in the synagogue, you know, he had to be righteous. He had to be forthright in order to instruct the people and draw them away from, what did it say, silly wives' tales? Mm -hmm. in the I love that version. <laughs> away from the silly wives' tales. Well, and they were used to that because here, you know, they were in an area where there was a lot of Greek practice or mythology or whatever you want to call it. So they were used to old wives' tales. Well, let's go back to the scripture again. We're going to go back to our original scripture. We kind of jumped around and went up to 4.12, went back to 4.6. Now let's get back to our base scripture for today, and that's 1 Timothy 4.8. For bodily discipline is only of a little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also for life to come. And then the NIV is for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. And our favorite version for this scripture is training your body, the ERV, training your body helps you in some ways, but devotion to God helps you in every way. It brings you blessings in this life and in the future life too. We're exercising our body, but this body isn't gonna last forever. That's why it only profits a little. You exercise your spirit, man, build yourself up spiritually in the things of God, like it says here, that's gonna benefit you now and in the life to come. So in eternity. In eternity, right. your eternity with right. Christ Jesus. Yeah, so exercise this as much as you exercise your body. Exercise this more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's get back over for our last exercise. Well, if you think about it, we eat how many meals a day? So we nourish our body, you know, usually three times a day. Yeah. How often do we nourish our spirit man with the word? It should be at least... At least three yeah, times Yeah, at least today. that. So. Yeah. Our last round, very last round for your strengthening and balance. We're going to do the heel to toe walk again. So we're repeating what we just did. 
But this round, I want you to raise up on your toes. Oh, I was gonna do the other. And then we're gonna go down into a little squat. Head so this is gonna be, yeah, this one's gonna be a challenge. So heel to toe is if that's not hard enough, come up on your toes and then do a little squat. Whoa. Now we're gonna walk backwards because we're running out of room, but up on your toes and then down to do a little squat. And you really do have to have good balance to do that. <laughs> you yeah, if you've got a stool, you know, balance on the stool or use your couch or whatever you, you know, whatever you have handy, whatever you can do to help build your strength. I'm coming back where you are. Come oh, back you're to going the stool. The other way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but what a great scripture. We encourage you, read the entire first Timothy, that whole book. Of course, read the whole Bible, but <laughs> for today's study, read that whole chapter when we get done with this program. Go ahead and read the whole chapter, that whole message from Paul to Timothy. Whoa and how he should instruct the church and then how he personally should have the fruit of the Spirit. I was just gonna say, do you know how hard it is to walk and talk and do all this at the same time <laughs> and you're not even cheating holding on to anything? So, that's pretty good. That's because we've, we've built up the strength and balance in our life this whole show, so I'm doing better. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about eternity. It is always about eternity. And every blessing that God has for us is in the Word. And if you don't know what's in the Word, then you don't know what blessings God's given you. Right. He's giving you all His perfect will. Well, it's called the test, the New Testament and the Old Testament, but it's a testament. It's a testimony of what you have, the promises of God. Yep. It's almost, it's a legal document. So you can claim that and say, hey, wait, this is a legal document. Here's what it says in the Word of God. It says, I am blessed. That's right. <laughs> So on every show we talk about health, nutrition, today we talked about getting better sleep, we talked about the jerk apple, the jerk apple. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about Tim First Timothy, and we talked about that exercise a little, it does help the body, but most of all the Word of God profits, you profit everything from that, and that's because there is a life eternal, and if you're not sure about your life eternal, where are you going to spend the rest of your life is salvation with Jesus and if you don't know that then just open your heart and say dear Lord Jesus come into my heart forgive me of my sins thank you that you died on the cross for me and you shed your blood for me and you rose on the third day thank you that you're coming back again for me in Jesus name if you did that then you have that eternal life with Jesus Right, and then allow Him to change you from the inside. Let Him change you. The Holy Spirit will make those changes that Paul was telling Timothy about. You'll be this mm -hmm. example, regardless of your age. Rega don't let your, despise your youth, regardless of your age. Be this example. Let the Holy Spirit rise up in you. You know, we always pray over you at the end of the program, and we use 3 John 1, 2 for that. And that scripture says, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. And that's what today's show was all about. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you guys. We love you guys.